Hi, welcome to the Glare Activity. So this is an interactive activity. Uh, it'll involve a little bit of role playing. So you, as instructor, will pretend to be the mayor of a fictitious city. And in recent times, you have received a lot of complaints from your citizens about different effects of light pollution. And you've been able to categorize them into six different separate categories right here that are addressed in the ra issues raised by your citizens' posters. So what you've done as mayor is divided your students into six different task forces, each one specifically designed to address these issues. So for the glare activity, we will have your glare task force read the two complaints here from your citizens in the glare section um, so that they can understand what the problem is uh, specifically with glare. That way, by the end of this activity, they will be able to design solutions uh, to get rid of these issues. So by this point, we don't expect your students to know much about light pollution or specifically glare. So we've provided you with this light pollution and glare poster uh, in order to provide the necessary background. So we start here with the glare section, just a brief overview of what it is. Uh, we go into the two main types of, light, of uh, glare, the uh, disability and discomfort. We also address a little bit about the effects on aging eyes. Um, and down here we have some key ideas provided to you. That way, if your students are interested in uh, further research and you know don't know exactly where to start, they can uh, Google these these uh, key phrases here in order to gain a better understanding. So we uh, we realize that students uh, learn better with a hands-on activity. So we've provided uh, this now try this section here which will give your students uh, instructions uh, for an activity that will show them uh, what the effects of glare are and how it affects people, especially with uh, aging eyes. So inside this kit, we've provided you with all the materials necessary to do the activity listed under the uh, Now Try This section of the glare poster. So, start with this box right here labeled glare on both sides and dig underneath to find the eye chart poster. Looks like this. It's also labeled glare on the back. So within this box labeled glare we have a few things. One is a colored flashlight that requires two D cell batteries also provided within the box. We also have this tape measure it's labeled on both sides with centimeters and inches, reaches up to five feet. We have a nice little black flashlight called a mag light that will be required for the eye chart. And finally, we have a Ziploc container with four inkjet transparencies. And these will be used to simulate uh, varying degrees of uh, cataracts in the eye. So at the end of this activity, your students will be required to find solutions to the problem of glare. The main solution is proper shielding of the light source. Now, the students may come up to the solution on their own, or you may guide them to it. In either case, we provided aluminum foil to help them create proper shields for the light. And this will become more clear in the next part of the video, when we do the actual demonstration of the activity. So to begin this activity, we will start with uh, using the, the eye chart from earlier and taping it on a wall uh, and having the students stand back either 20 feet or 6 meters away from it with an unobstructed view. And this will essentially be uh, a standard eye test that we will do under varying conditions. So the students will stand 20 feet or 6 meters away from it and read from the smallest line that they can discern. While they do that, another student from the Glare Task Force will be recording the lines that they can read. So we will first do this under normal lighting room conditions and read it as you would normally. Uh, for myself, I can see up to line six. So what we do then is have one inkjet transparency directly in front of the student's eyes and see where they can read from after that. So for me, I can still see the same line. Now I add it 
and add another transparency do this with two of them and I noticed right away that I have diminished view and I can only really see up to line five and so we do this for transparencies three and four and for each of these uh, the student will read off what they can see and the other student will record them. So for the next part of this activity, students will be asked to take the exact same measurements as before, except this time, the lights will be off in the room. If you can't turn off the lights, make sure the room is as dark as you can possibly get it. So in order for this to work, we'll have another student within the task force set up next to the eye chart with two flashlights. One of them is the regular flashlight which will be used to illuminate the eye chart for the student taking the test. The other, the mag light, will be used to simulate the glare. Now it's important to understand now, when you use the mag light, you must twist it in order to turn on the beam. But when you first twist it, the beam is very diffuse and out of focus. In order to best simulate glare, we want to bring the light beam uh, into as much of a focus as we can bring it. And you do that simply by twisting the top of it. So we've turned off the lights for this next part of the activity. Um, and all we ask you, although we ask you to make the room as dark as possible, we've decided to keep a little bit of light in just for the purposes of this video. So, uh, we have one student next to the eye chart with a flashlight illuminating it. And again, I will do as I did in the last part of the video, going through, taking the eye test, um, first without any of the transparencies, and then one by one adding another and recording the data as we move along. So, Doing this again, I can see up to line 6 as before, and I will add a single transparency. Looking through that, there's some amount of glare, I can only see up to line 5. With uh, two of these now, line 5 is still barely discernible. Now again with three and I can hardly see five. Uh, it looks four is where it's at. And one more time with all four and I can only see up to line three with that. So for the next part of this activity we do as we've done in the previous two, except this time we have a mag light pointed at the student. Uh, it's important to take note where the mag light is situated. It's shining on my torso not above my neck, into my face. And we do this to simulate the effects of glare without having the light shine directly into the student's eyes, which could be harmful to them. So again, I will do the eye test with the transparencies. Uh, reading off of here, without any of them, I can only discern up to line three. So I will do this with one transparency, and as I move through this again, my friend here is uh, recording the data that I take. So with one transparency, uh, what you should notice right away is a starburst pattern from the mag light, and that's due to the glare. So with this, line three is completely indiscernible. I can only see up to line two. So the effects are drastic and immediate. So do this with two, and I can still see line two, but just barely. Now with three transparencies, the glare is really bad. Uh, there's a huge starburst pattern, lots of coloration, and I can, I can still see two, but just barely. Now, final time with uh, all four transparencies, and it is impossible to see anything past the first row. And so you students should notice, or should have similar data. Uh, they'll, they'll notice that as you start using these transparencies with the mag light pointed at them to simulate the glare, uh, they will, their ability to see will massively deteriorate right away. So the next part of this activity will involve your students searching for a solution to the problem of glare. Now the main problem of glare is that light from the bulb shines directly into your eyes and not down on the ground where we need it. So your students may find on their own, or you may guide them to the proper answer of shielding, which we've uh, hinted at on our poster. So the solution I came up with is just uh, using the little aluminum foil that we provided in the kit to make a little cap that directs the light from the bulb 
downward onto the ground where we need it and not into our eyes where it can blind us. So your students will do this one more time uh, with, their, with their solution uh, attached to the maglite and they will compare the data from the set to the data from previous sets and in order to test the effectiveness of the shielding. So by this point, your students will have already come up with a solution to the problem of glare. So what we will do is uh, repeat this activity one last time with the uh, solution in place on the maglite and we will test the, effect the effectiveness of this solution. So I will do this again as before without any transparencies and read off from the eye chart. I can see up to line six right now. I do this with one and it's still number six. Now with two transparencies and that goes down to a number five. With three transparencies, I can still see five, but just barely. And with all four transparencies, I can only see up to line three. So as your students move through the activity, they should have recorded their data into four separate categories. First with the room lights on, then with the room lights off, again with the room lights off and the mag light creating the glare, and finally with uh, the solution attached to the mag light. So as they recorded their data, they should have noticed that it got progressively worse with each trial up until hopefully the last trial with the solution. Now the effectiveness of the solution is determined by how well data from the last set matches the data from the first set. Once the students are satisfied with the solution that they've come up with, they are tasked with presenting uh, a video or a PowerPoint or something to the mayor and to the class to showcase their solution and how effective it was.